So if we go back to our custom table view cell, we have to lay it out in the same way that we might lay out a view controller, right? And so there's this function here called layout subviews. And this gets called any time that you add a subview um, and the cell is about to load, it'll properly lay out those subviews as we define them. So some things we want on our cell, I'm thinking, is we need a UI image view, and then we'll need a title, so that'll be a label, and then we'll need that sub-label for the dog's breed. Maybe we'll gray it out and put it on the bottom there. So the first thing to create is the dog's profile view. So we'll say var dog profile of type UI image view will be equal to and we'll say image view and we'll say let image view be equal to a UI image view instantiate that return that image view and then go down and make sure that they execute next we need our um, dog name which will be of type UI label and that'll be equal to this enclosure here so we'll say let label be equal to a UI label instantiate it then we'll return that label all right and then make sure that executes right away and then finally we're gonna have our dog breed and that'll be a UI label as well but of course I'll make it a sub label uh, design wise and we'll say uh, actually, the same thing as this label. We'll create them the same way. All right, so now we have each of our uh, labels and our profile picture, but we want to say where they're going to go on the cell. And so just in the same way that we'd lay out a view controller, we want to set their frame. So we'll say dog profile dot frame will be equal to a CG rect. And we'll define that with this initializer here. Uh, I'm going to say it's x value. We'll give it a tiny bit of a border. We'll say it's 5 away from the x side. It'll be right up against the top of the cell. Its width, maybe we'll say that it is, uh, we'll make it square. So it'll be 100 width and 100 height because that is the height of our table view cell. But we can make that a little bit smarter by saying self dot content view which is almost like a view controllers view but in the cell it's called a content view self dot content view dot frame dot height and we want the same for the height that way we know it'll be square based on the cells height and self dot content view dot add sub view dot profile so this class has a variable of type dog, which we got when we initialize the class, or we will get when we do initialize it, the table view cell. And we can set the dog profile dot image to be equal to our dog dot profile. And then I might just set that dog profile dot content mode to be equal to scale aspect fill. We'll use that one. All right, so before I go any further, this class is sort of just floating and we haven't used it yet. And so I want to show you how we implement it into our cells. That way you'll see just a dog's profile appear and we can go on later with the dog's name and its breed. All right, so let's go to our view controller. And first off, obviously we've declared a UI table view cell as normal, but we're going to change it firstly right here to a dog cell which means we're registering a cell of type dog cell this time. And when we go to create our cell, we'll change this to dog cell. And then we will create our dog cell and use that initializer that we sort of modified there. Its style will just be the usual UI table view cell style dot default and its reuse identifier will still be cell ID. Now the dog we're going to pass in 
we want to pass in one of our dogs from our array up here. All right, so we could just pass in our first dog, but we want to say array of dogs with the subscript of index path dot row. That way, each cell will have the first dog, the second dog, the third dog, like so. Lastly, this text label, because we're going to put our dog's profile right around here, is going to get in the way. So I'm just going to remove that for now. And that's why we're declaring our own label in our class. And you'll see if I just build and run that very quickly. All right, as you can see, we have these cells load up. They're all 100 top to bottom. And that's why we've set our dog's uh, profiles that way. But I don't really like that they're square. And so the best part about having our custom class is all we have to do to change that is go back to our custom dog class, go down to where we declared our dog profiles frame. And I just want to say dog profile dot layer dot corner radius is going to be equal to uh, to make it completely circle we want to set it to the image views width divided by two and that'll give us a perfect circle and now because the corner radius is technically a mask we won't see anything unless we say dog profile dot mask to dot layer dot mask to bounds is equal to true. So now within that new corner radius that we set, that should be a circle, the dog profile will actually clip and cut off anything else that's outside of the circle. So we'll build and run that. And there you have it. Now we have our lovely dog profiles in nice circles. Next, I want to continue by adding the dog's name and the breed sublabel there. So we'll do it the exact same way we did with the dog profile, except we'll do it with our labels. So let's say dog name, which is our label, dot frame is going to be equal to a CG rect, right? It's X because we want it next to or to the right of our dog's profile. We're going to say dog profile dot frame dot max X. And we'll just give it a little bit of cushioning with maybe plus 10. Before I set the Y, I'm going to set the width and the height really quick. So the width, I want it to be the width of the cell minus the little bit of padding I put here, which I believe is 5 on the dog cell, then minus the width of the dog profile pick, then minus the little padding I put on the edge here, which was 10, and then I want to give it a little bit of padding on the side here too, and I'll give it another 10. So. The way we'll do that is the width is going to be self.contentView.frame.width, which, like I said, would make it the entire width of this. But I'll say minus the 5 for the padding view, minus the dog profile.frame.width, minus the padding of 10 on the other side, and then minus another padding of 10 on just the outside. So now, with our x value set at just 10 outside here, and our width should be just to the edge here, that's where our label will go. And its height, we'll say maybe that it's 30, just to give us plenty of room. The reason why I waited to set the y until I set the height is just because we have to do a little bit more math, and it's good to know what the height of your label is already. I think I want my label to be exactly halfway down the cell and that would require saying that self dot content view dot frame dot height divide by two which will give us a point halfway through but it'll start off at the top left corner of our label and so we just want to take off half of the height of our label as well to make sure that the center of our y value in our label is the center of the y value of the cell there. We'll set the dog name dot text be equal to our dog dot uh, dog name there and that's from our variable again back up here. And then we'll say self dot content view dot add subview dog name. Okay, so we will build and run that. All right, looks good. So we have our label at the dead center 
right next to our profile pic and I just want to put a sub label and maybe make it gray like you see in most apps of just the dog breed.